this week on the College of the Podcast. We go through the issues of training over the summer, keeping your diet together over the summer, and training specificity. So sit back and enjoy. Alright, and we are here with the third installment of the College Lifter Podcast. No Ryan this week. Unfortunately, he's in Pensacola and I'm still having some technical difficulties with my computer. So, with me here I have Kara, who is my girlfriend, and we're going to be training together this summer. So, the big question and kind of the topic for this is what to do when things are not ideal. So our situation right now is that we don't have that much money. <clears throat> Obviously, we're college kids. That's what this is all about. Uh, limited time because we both have jobs, and she's actually going to be out of the country for a little bit. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to be going solo for a couple weeks. And also location. So, Kara, what do you think about going out of the country and missing those uh, six weeks of training? Just in general, I mean, it's hard enough when you're going back to a different place for the summer. I mean, I think the enemy of any training is always going to be missing that routine. It's always easiest to eat cleanest, to stay in your habit of training when you have some kind of routine to go back to. And we all have that established during the weekdays. Even the weekends, we tend to fall off. So especially going to us, we're both going home. I know some people don't go home, but we're both going home. I'm going out of the country. So that really throws off your pattern of this routine that you've already established. And hopefully for you, you're going to be able to jump back into it pretty easily. But I'm a little bit worried, I have to say, because for six weeks, I'll be out of the country. I won't have any Mm -hmm. access to weights. My diet's going to be kind of at the mercy of what they have in Italy, which from what I hear is not a lot of meat. So I'm a little bit worried about that. And so it's going to come down to really being able to jump back into that routine and just hitting it hard when I come back home. Yeah, I really feel you there on the whole low meat thing when I was growing up, (laughs) didn't have as much as compared to grains, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but when you're training for strength and speed and all that, it's not exactly optimal. So, but yeah, so what we're doing is actually a little bit different. We're going off the reservation this summer slightly. Mm -hmm. We both CrossFit. We, I've done it for, what is it, two years now, I think, something like that. Right, and I'm just at the one year mark myself. Yeah, and one thing that we've noticed is we are lacking the background that a lot of top athletes have. So if you look at a lot of high-level guys, uh, and I really noticed this during the Open, going to a couple different events they had here in Jacksonville, was that a lot of the high-level guys are much larger than you would anticipate or that you would think. And so Mm -hmm. one thing that we both kind of realized is we're lacking that size and that kind of baseline strength that you need to be able to transition smoothly into a higher level of CrossFit. Yeah, I remember we were going to uh, help judge one of the competitions for your gym, Mako CrossFit, and we left there and you're going, man, i got to get back to training. These guys are huge. But yeah, that's obviously that's a huge thing. I've been dealing myself with the past semester. I haven't already been able to afford to do CrossFit. And so I was trying to figure out something that I could do just in my apartment. And I've built Mm. up pretty small time stuff. I have a pull-up bar. I have gymnastics rings now. I have a kettlebell, which is like my bread and butter to training these days. But in the past month and a half, you've had me doing a lot of just accessory work where it's max sets of ring rows or handstand push-ups. And the funny thing was, a couple weeks ago, I had the opportunity to go back to my CrossFit gym at home. Mm -hmm. And we were doing just as a skill set a... um, push press where we were working up to a heavy three five sets and I was over here thinking beforehand okay I probably need to be aiming for like 75 my one rep max clean and jerk at the moment is really low it's 85 but then I got into the gym after just a month of doing this accessory work not even crossfit anymore and I was able to do for the last set 85 for three which used to be my one rep max for a split jerk yeah. So that just proved overall to me that it's so important to have your accessory work going on, which kind of helped gear me toward the idea that I wanted to, instead of doing CrossFit this summer, to come back home and really work on that accessory work so that I could go back into CrossFit later and improve. Yeah, I, I totally get that. I mean, I remember hearing Mike Bledsoe, and by the way, y'all will hear me, hear me plug Bledsoe with Barbell Shrugged, the Power Athlete guys with John Wellborn, and... 
Brian McKenzie with Conception Lab a lot, so just get <laughs> used to that. But I do remember hearing Bledsoe talk about how when he talks to these high-level guys or just any guys really in CrossFit who are really into it and they're really good, who and a lot of times they'll say, oh, you, all you need to do is CrossFit, all you need to do is this and that, all you need to do is the Metcon, and then you ask him, well, what did you do before CrossFit? Oh, yeah, I bodybuilded, I powerlifted. They did stuff that was isolation, trying to make sure everything was symmetrical. So, And now they see the benefits of not getting hurt and having that baseline strength to be able to do more. So what we're probably going to end up doing is, uh, actually shout out to another podcast, The Powercast with Mark Bell. Uh, we're going to do sort of his style of training as far as I have discerned from YouTube videos, because that's what I have. Uh, don't I'm not really in contact with Mark, but... It'd be cool to be. Uh, but we're going to basically go through his routine of a strength movement of the day. So kind of a West Side style thing going on there. And then move into a secondary barbell movement, which most of the time will be the same movement, just lighter weight and higher reps. And then move into the tan part of the workout or the hypertrophy part of the workout, just to build up some of that exercise and weight for myself. And also just that strength to be able to push a certain amount of weight over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And just to point out, I mean, what we're doing is because we have specific goals in mind. Like, Will is hoping to add a certain amount of pounds to all of his lift. For me, this is really bold to say out loud because now that means I have to actually go for it. Yes, accountability. And about three to five years, I want to actually be a contender for regionals. For me, that means top 50 in the region. That's a huge goal, especially for me. I've never actually picked up weights before I CrossFitted. Right. So if you're looking for goals like us, then yeah, it's really necessary that you get that background work and that skill, that accessory work to build that strength. If that's not so much your goal, you just want to stay fit, then it's fine to just go with a CrossFit program all the time and that's all you do. We're not bashing that at all. We both love it. That's our background. Yeah, I, I love that you pointed that out. Because, yeah, this is a targeted specific. We're doing it for this a lot of amount of time. Then we're jumping back into straight CrossFit. Yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> I almost left that out and people have been really confused. He was actually um, mentioning to me earlier this semester when I, I did call out that I was making the decision to switch to just programs training these certain specific areas and dropping CrossFit this summer. He kind of gave me this look and was like, I can't believe that you're actually leaving CrossFit this summer. Because he knows... Because she is, she is such a CrossFit fan. I am a CrossFit nerd. I own, yeah. like, all the t-shirts. Uh, I have yeah. the best nanos ever because I customize them. I figured if you're spending that much on shoes anyways, you might as well customize them. But I get compliments on them all the time, so it works out. So, yeah, I'm a CrossFit nerd. I'll sit there in my free time and rewatch CrossFit games and regionals. Oh, yeah. So now it makes sense that my goal is to get to regionals, or at least close. After we're done with this, I should really show you how much Air Jordans cost, just so you can freak out. Oh, I don't think I want to see that. I nearly had a heart attack spending, I think it was 140 on those Nanos. Oh, no, I, that's I awesome. love shoes. I love my high heels. I love my flats, my sandals. I never spend more than $20 on them. So I figured if I was going to get that much sticker shock anyways. Oh, my hyper, my hyper dunks in high school, Nike hyper dunks were, what was it, almost 200 bucks customized? All right, now we're getting way off track just nerding out on shoes. <laughs> it's just what I do. Anyways. Oh, I know. <laughs> it's a much different dynamic not having Ryan here. It is. Not getting bogged down by all the science. There's nerds. But another scared. interesting thing to point out, because what kind of what we're gearing toward talking about on this podcast is just kind of the monkey wrench. Something yeah. like summer will throw into your program when something you've worked out so nice and tight during the school year just completely goes away for us. Because one of the things that we lose the majority of control on coming home is our diet. Oh, don't even get me started on that. Actually, I'm in good shape this year. I am in good shape this year because I've been charging most of my me. meals. Yeah. I've been home for a week before I leave for Italy on... Actually, I leave on for Italy tomorrow. But I've been home a week and I've eaten way too many chocolate things and bread just because that's what my mom keeps shoving down my throat. So I need to try and figure out a way to pull that back in control. Because honestly, if you train but you don't have your diet style down, it's pretty much all for naught. I don't know if I go that far. I'd say long-term, yeah. I'd say long-term, mm -hmm. yeah. There, there's a lot of science about that and about how it kind of... Your tolerance wears off and stuff will catch up to you. I've been in the same boat, though. I'm pretty sure that jar of M&M's, I've eaten at least half. Oh, I've seen you over there at least three or four times a day. Oh, yeah. It, it was like <laughs> eight times a day today. But it's not it's not an example, folks. Don't, don't <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. But uh, this summer, I'm actually in good shape. Uh, I'm staying with some family. And that means that I am still 
shopping for myself and buying the food I need to buy um, and kind of dialing things in. One thing I've tried to do is to kind of go back to an old school. Uh, old school style of dieting not not old school like 50 60 percent carbs i'm not going that crazy <laughs> but measuring out in ounces so i'm going to have seven to eight ounces of meat a day seven to eight ounces of vegetables a day and the rest of my caloric intake is going to be made up as fat so if i have a salad i'm just going to pour olive oil on it or something like that so i'm in pretty good stead to set a good baseline this summer now that's yeah, something I need to maintain because yeah. some of you may may identify, even if you're kind of living on your own, you have been for a while, where you go home just to visit with parents or visit with friends and they don't eat in line with how you eat yeah, pretty much right. every single day. And if you're just visiting with them for a weekend, that's fine. Go crazy. You kind of have to have that balance and you can't deprive yourself of all the fun. But for me, when I'm home in a whole summer in that environment, I'm going to have to find a way to kind of take some control of my diet. Yeah, uh, I totally agree with that. It's going to be an interesting transition mm -hmm. between from here to Italy and back and seeing how your yes. stomach deals with that. I'm a little bit concerned about that. Yeah. I mean, Italy, everybody thinks pizza and pasta immediately. Well, uh, do they really eat pizza over there? I think it's more pasta, but yeah, pizza does exist. Well, okay. <laughs> All right, anyways. But yeah, now okay, so now onto the idea of training, what we're actually going to do. We teased you all a little bit earlier in the show about that. So, what we have been planning is, we already went over kind of the basic template. Uh, the goals for this summer are for me to throw on a whole lot more weight, especially in up the upper body movements. So, I'm actually going to go back to bench pressing, which is going to be crazy. Ooh. I'm going to mix that up with overhead pressing. Um, and I know... People are going to say, bench pressing doesn't help overhead, overhead helps bench. I know this. <laughs> However, have you seen Rich Froning's chest? That's all I'm going to say. Does it go back to that whole idea of isolating? No, 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 no. So, the reason, so your overhead press doesn't involve as much chest, mm -hmm. and it's a different grip usually. Okay. I could do close grip bench, and it'd be more like it. Uh, so I'm, I might mix up the grips there, but really this summer is more about overall strength and just getting well-rounded. So I'm going to be pushing the numbers on both. All right. And I know we were talking about actually doing a couple times a day. Yes. Oh yeah. Thank you for reminding me of that. <laughs> so the plan is to do all that strength training in the morning because we both have jobs. Right. So we're going to strength train in the morning before work. We're going to go to work, you know, eat healthy lunches and all that, everything we should. And then afterwards, we're going to find some track or I'm going to map out some place with the uh, Run Keeper app or something like that and start doing intervals. So intervals are a great way, and if you listened to the podcast last week, intervals are a great way for to condition. Ryan brought up the point that it's the only proven way to increase your VO2 or fast intervals and just repeats over and over again, one-to-one -one rest, or you know, you can mix up however you want. I like the one-to-one -one because I'm not that advanced of an athlete, <laughs> and neither is Kara oh, as far no, as track goes. Oh, no, is my enemy to the nth degree. But I think baseline speed is really important, um, and VO2 max is going to be important for CrossFitters, so you can mm -hmm. lift, lift weights more efficiently. Rob Wolf talked about that on the Lace Barbell Shrugged, um, which I thought was great. Ryan, please don't hate me for bringing that up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that proved your point from last week, actually. Uh, you, you know, I, yeah, it did. Um, <laughs> no beating around the bush about it. It <laughs> didn't prove it, but it gives it more validity. But, no, Ryan, Ryan is totally right with what he's looking at because he's looking at separating the positions. Um, but for me, what I want to do, I've never been the fast guy. Mm -hmm. And I had the potential to be. I just never trained it. Honestly, in high school, I was lazy with my physical training. I spent more time working on skill stuff, which turns out wasn't really as important. <laughs> uh, yeah, I spent forever shooting baskets, not that much time running, so I didn't really make the cut. Well, you were playing basketball most of the time growing up. You were only in football for the last couple. But, I mean, even for basketball, I should have been running more and conditioning more instead of just playing around. So, I'm going to try to alleviate that by training this summer. I think we're going to either use Brian McKenzie's template which I know is more of an endurance thing, but mm -hmm. the way he layers its speed comes before endurance. 
So it's going to start out with, I think the first week is eight 200 meter repeats on one. Oh, that tourist. sounds lovely. Oh, it's going to be great. <laughs> uh, and then, so yeah, that's going to be in the afternoon. I'm not sure how many days a week we're going to do that. Still planning that out, still in drafting stage. Yeah, I think that's going to depend a lot on our schedules because, I mean, you don't want to overdo it. And we're, neither of us are at the top level athlete. Top level. Bleh, I can't speak today. Okay. Yeah, it happens on this show. You just <laughs> get a microphone in your face and things now. change. <laughs> top athlete level yet. Obviously, you hear. I mean, the thing about CrossFit Games is it's pretty much becoming a professional thing. I mean, this is what these guys do. They work out two, three times a day. We can't really do that yet. We're not at that level. We don't have that availability. And yeah. it's something you have to work up to anyways. You can't look at what these top athletes are doing and immediately throw yourself into it unless you have a lot of prior training, which neither of us have. Well, yeah. I mean, I guarantee you Rich Froning was not always – actually, I know Rich Froning was not always doing the volume because if you look at the videos from way back in the day when he was first starting, he wasn't doing the amount of volume, or at least I don't think it was published that he was – that he's doing today and that everyone freaks out about. He mm -hmm. built that over time. And plus, he had a great athletic career. I mean, he didn't go anywhere crazy, but he still did play college baseball. Right. And if you know anything about baseball, those guys train with a lot of intervals, a lot of distance training, and a lot of heavy strength training. Mm -hmm. So he's got years and years of being underweight. He built that up over that time. You can't just jump into that. And so we're not going to. Right. Because, especially with Kara, we have to watch it. I played sports through high school. I wasn't the best. But I still do have some background. And especially right after high school, I really, because I screwed my back up, really got into getting some good reps in to try to alleviate all that. So we're going to have to be a little bit careful with her. Hi. <laughs> so, but we're not going to take it too easy. No, I never want it too easy. That's just boring. Well, okay. <laughs> we'll see what you're saying. And, well, you've got a while before that starts. After you have me on small off and everything else? I'm debating. I'm debating if we want to do that. I definitely want to throw in the um, front squat cycle that Travis Mash put out because that did wonders for my front squat and my position in the back squat overall. P right. Position is something we know that I need to hammer because I've injured my knees Quite often over the course of my lifetime. I'm very surprised you haven't Actually, had knee surgery one yet. Of the, <laughs> one of the things I did get to help myself, because while I'm in Italy, I want to be keeping up with some kind of physical exercise. Um, running's not a great option, first off, because honestly, sometimes my knees can't handle it. I've had meniscus issues coming from running. <clears throat> that's probably has to do with position I need to work on the pose method, and that will probably yes. go away. But I did just buy the hip circle from Mark Bell. Amazing product. And I'm going to be hammering that over the next six weeks to try and get my glutes, my knees, everything firing strong enough and in the correct way so that when I do come back and start this heavier volume, I'm not completely crushed under the load, so to speak. Yeah. And going back to kind of the stuff we were saying about laying down that baseline, what's important is that when she or I, because I mean, that's my main problem is I get about halfway up and I literally just end up pausing and having to think, all right, drive your knees back out, and then I come up with the weight in the squat, whatever squat it is. The hip circle is great because it forces you to learn that. And the goal is not to, you know, just go through it, not go through the motions. I see so many people, you know, in the gyms I go to who, when we do side shuffles, they're standing up tall and they're just bouncing off the balls of their foot. That's not doing anything. That's not a side shuffle. A side shuffle is your knees are bent, your hips are bent, um, you're in a good athletic position and you're moving and your feet aren't touching and you're staying wide and protecting your base. That is an athletic position for any sport, for volleyball, for football, for basketball, whatever, baseball. And so the important thing about the hip circle is we need to now teach someone who has never been in those positions correctly mm -hmm. how to do it and how to stay down and stay low and get strong in that. Because that's really where you're going to see a difference. You're going to see a difference in, oh, yeah, just dance around like a fairy or actually <laughs> getting into the right position and turning on what she needs to turn on. Right, because I, I know that people harp on CrossFitters a lot for lacking that position, for not caring about the position. Now I've been blessed to have been in two gyms that are fantastic about coaching position. They will no rep you if your form is bad. But I've also 
the first gym I was ever in, I won't name names for their sake, but they, first of all, half the time they were wrong about the form that you needed to have. They taught it wrong, or they didn't catch it, or they didn't care, because they were hammering out this idea of speed. But yeah, even of... if cheating it in the short run may get you a faster time, nobody's looking at the leaderboard the next day. I promise you, they're not. So really what you're doing is you're just injuring yourself at that point. Yeah. Not only as far as later on you're going to have issues, but even that day you're not improving to your full extent if you don't have your form nailed down. Yeah, um, the head coach at Mako, my gym, Brandon Massey, put out an amazing video. I think it might be on YouTube on Mako's page. Mm -hmm. But talking about how you're looking for the stimulus of the day. So if we're doing Fran, all right, in the gym, number one, this is not competition, all right? This is training. Mm -hmm. Number two, all right, so if you, you know you screwed up, you are just fudging the line on the depth in your thrusters or fudging the lockout and just not moving well, did you really get that stimulus today? Definitely not. Because the question, the question isn't how you're doing today. The question is, what this accumulation of training is going to do to you as far as a positive result of getting you better in the future. Today yeah. doesn't matter as much. This, what matters about today is that you get the work in and you get it in correctly. Right, because it will lead to those better results in the future. And that's why CrossFit does have those measurable workouts. And when you see them repeated in the games or in regionals or in the open... They clearly state it's because they want to see how the CrossFit community as a whole has grown and has gotten better. Yeah. And that should be your overall goal for yourself as well. Whether you do a repeatable workout or you're just seeing how your one rep max is growing, your five rep max, ten, ten rep max if you want to go crazy. It's, that's, all, that's what it comes down to is how you're improving on those elements. Ten rep max is horrible. <laughs> yeah, but to redeem the CrossFit community a little bit, most of the time people complaining about CrossFit form have worse form themselves <laughs> it's true i've seen it that's true i've seen someone front squatting on a bozu ball well that is just going to get somebody very seriously injured that is why hospital rooms exist yes that and people stepping off of things breaking their ankles but i'm not going to share personal that. stories with my friends and family uh, <laughs> <laughs> so actually i was on flat ground when i did that that takes skill <laughs> it does i'm very skilled <clears throat> So yeah, guys, during this summer, guys and girls, yeah, <laughs> during the summer, yep. make sure you got your diet down, do meal prep, that's one big thing I'm going to go back to doing is meal prep, I'm going to cook up all my breakfast and lunch throughout the week, actually I'm going to cook up two, so I'm going to have one stack of Tupperware that's chicken and one stack that's beef, and I'm just going to pull one whenever I feel like it from either side, um, breakfast is going to be pre-cooked, I'm actually going to start doing some smoothies to drink during breakfast just to get that veggie mm -hmm. intake up. Uh, make sure you have a good place to train. Make sure your facility has a reasonable price. We've learned about yes. shopping around for prices and locations today. And, yeah, watch out for that initiation fee. Even if the month to month's not that bad, one of the gyms we looked at had a $200 initiation fee, and that makes it completely not worth it right there. And th these are Globo gyms, guys. Right. right? We're, we're going straight to the bro old school stuff, which is just... Again, targeted things, weaknesses of ours. But yes, be careful of those prices if you're doing that. And also, make sure your programming is on point for what you want to do. So if you want to be a faster runner and you don't have any reason to believe, which it, it, it is possible, I'm a big believer in this, but for whatever reason you don't think powerlifting is going to help you run faster, which I think it probably will, but anyways, um, then don't do it. Do something different. Train for your goals. If your goal is CrossFit, yeah, go to a CrossFit gym. Mm -hmm. so. But ultimately, to accomplish all of this stuff, if you're going to be in an environment this summer that's outside of where you normally are, if that's because you're in college or for whatever reason you're traveling, the first thing you need to do to make sure everything else falls into place is get a routine established. Yes, that's very important. My, my morning routine is already in my head for what it's going to be. It's very helpful. Yeah, we'll see if it holds up. <laughs> it will. Okay. Uh, yeah, my family, they're, they're going to get up at around four just like I do, so it won't be that big of a deal. That works out. Yeah. Oh, and also, sleep. Sleep is huge. 
Guys, oh, yes. it's the summer. You want to go out and have fun. I understand this. But don't make it every night of the week, okay? You still got to be productive. You still probably got a job. You still probably got some school if you live in the state of Florida because we have to have nine credit hours over mm -hmm. the summer. Uh, you still have to do everything you, that you're supposed to do. Still make money and still stay in shape. Keep the parting to the weekend. Keep the week structured where you have your scheduled time to sleep, your nightly rituals so you get good sleep and you keep your testosterone levels up. Yeah, don't let summer be the time that you fall off the wagon because it's so easy to do. Yeah. Now, if it's just for like a week and you're on vacation, yeah, that's fine. But if it extends to two weeks, that's not vacation. That's your lifestyle now. <laughs> so. Yes. All right. And I think that's going to wrap up today's show. A um, few announcements. If you haven't already checked out the Twitter page, you need to do that. We just put our brand new logo up. So check that out. It's really cool. And we also have a Facebook page. So just on either one. Look up College Lifter Podcast and you should find it pretty easily. Yeah, thanks guys and see y'all next week.